Okay, this is Emilio Genesis Imperfecta uh, by Connor Christensen and Eric Van Boning. Um, so, with Emilio Genesis Imperfecta, there's three different phenotypes. The first phenotype is hypoplastic. Um, it's characterized by reduced tooth um, size and enamel small spaces between teeth, as well as having a yellowish brown color um, as evidence of a defect of converting organic materials into inorganic materials. So you can see on those two pictures, um, you have hypermineralized um, enamel and some brown spots and loss of interproximal contact. The next phenotype is the highest of calcified phenotype, and that's just a general failure of mineralization. And it, that's the most extreme in this phenotype. So you see enamel on the, on the tooth, but it's, it easily wears away and flakes away with time and wear. Um, the next phenotype is hypomature. Um, and that is fa uh, failure of the enamel matrix proteins to to promote um, the hardening of the enamel layer. So you, you see a tooth structure, but it, it's a brown color because there's a lack of, of the radiopaque enamel, and you're seen with just mainly dent in structure. So you see a general loss of proximal contacts and a decreased size of crowns uh, or anatomical crowns as far as, and as well as a, a decreased cusp height and kind of flattening of the tooth. Clinical symptoms, patients going to be unhappy with their aesthetics due to the color of their teeth. Um, the sensitive teeth is due to vari the variable dentin state and the possible exposure of dentin. And they may have food becoming entrapped between the teeth due to a loss of proximal contacts. They're also going to have possibly inflamed or sensitive gingiva. The clinical signs, you're going to have that yellowish brown appearance of the teeth. They're going to have that variable status of enamel, either the hypoplastic, hypomature, hy hypocalcified, or hypomineralized phenotype. And they may have possible exposure of dentin, leading to sensitivity. They're going to have loss of interproximal contacts, given that picket fence appearance. And they're going to have square-shaped crowns, flat and posterior teeth. The demographics, um, there's no significant demographic association proven with AI. The incidence is about 1 in 14,000 people in the U.S. It can be... The location, the pathologic location, it can occur in the mandible or maxilla. The edge is well defined. The shape, it's going to be thin or absent enamel with the appearance of squ square shaped crowns. The internal structure, it's going to be a thin radiopaque edge if the enamel is present. Other structures are not applicable. The number, it's going to affect all teeth in the oral cavity. And the size is going to be dependent on the amount of enamel affected. Thank you very much. Um. The differential interpretations include dentinogenesis imperfecta, dental fluorosis, and chronological enamel formation. Um, and you can kind of refer to the paper in this slide, um, but for lack of time, we're just going to kind of say that these are the differential interpretations for amelogenesis imperfecta and, you know, with further, further clinical exam examination in the dental chair and, um, and with conversion with the patient, it'd be you can kind of eliminate um, your four um, likely um, differentials. Uh, when considering a patient um, of having amelogenesis imperfecta. Uh, the treatment for amelogenesis imperfecta, um, obviously it's present in both primary and permanent dentition, so you have to restore both both teeth that present with this condition, both sets of dentition. Um, for primary dentition, you mainly want to crown all the teeth uh, to, to provide adequate strength and structure um, to, to masticate on and, and to function properly. Uh, and in an anterior, you'd, you would uh, want a more aesthetic crown, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So you'd maybe like a, a strip crown with composite or a polycarbonate crown or you know, whatever you consider and whatever is best for the patient. And in extreme situations, extractions may be indicated. For permanent dentition, uh, crown is, crowning is recommended for all permanent teeth. Obviously, aesthetic is more of a consideration in the anterior and then extractions may be necessary. And then surgical infection if malocclusion is present. For the characteristical clinical findings, you're going to have a yellowish brown appearance of the teeth. They may have decreased or hypomature or normal enamel thickness, or they could be poorly mineralized, like in the hy hypocalcification. You're going to have a loss of interproximal contacts, which is going to result in a picket like fence appearance of the patient's teeth. And you may have a rapid formation of calculus, as well as acute and chronic periodontitis. What you're going to see on the radiographs, you're going to have a decreased opacity of enamel. It's going to be closer to that of the dentin. You're going to have rectangular crowns, thin radiopaque layer of enamel, possibly loss of proximal contacts seen on the radiographs. You're also going to have minimal or absent cusps. You can tell they're kind of flattened. 